One of life's little miracles is trying to figure out when a package comes in what was in my mind when I ordered it. Uh, this one came in with a big shipment from LCSC around about the time that I was building the Paduk programmer, which I'll, I'll link up here. But this is actually not part of the Paduk programmer at all. But maybe what I was thinking was looking ahead to when I'm doing more work with the ESP32s and the ESP8266s because they need a 3.3 volt input. And the other thing is that when they're connecting to the interwebs, they can actually, uh, they need a bit of oomph. So up to, uh, in this case, it's 500 milliamps. So hmm, maybe um, that's what I had in mind. So let's have a look at them and see if we can't oh, go past a few projects first. Okay. So let's get one out. I think it's a SOT 89, which should be fun for the soldering. So, yeah, where's my little... I always find this is a lot more difficult to get out than what you might imagine. Old eyes don't, don't help either. There we go. Okay. So, this is it in all its glory. Huge, isn't it? Let's see if we can get a little bit closer to that. All right. So, what do we have? So, SOT 89... And the pinout, according to the interwebs anyway, is ground on this side. And then we've got V in and V out. And some of the features of this particular package, so this is the SSP7603. And this is the P33 version, so that's the 3.3 volts. So theoretically, 500 milliamps, we might test that. Uh, in fact, we will test that. I think that's important. Uh, so low dropout. So uh, quoted is around about 0.17 volts at 100 milliamp. Uh, you've also got, well, you know, good stability theoretically. Uh, we've got 1.5 microamp crescent current. Uh, which is pretty low. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good because this is most likely going to be used in a solar power project, so we don't be drawing a huge amount of power. Uh, it's also quoted at plus or minus two percent in terms of the um, the voltage tolerance. So we'll measure that and see if that's actually true. It does also have a current limiter built in, so maybe I won't be able to test it uh, until it dies. Um, well, I guess we'll find out. And uh, what else? Yeah, we've got up to um, 15 volts in. So, um, and I'm not sure what the lower limit is, but yeah, that's pretty good. And how we uh, put it together is that we have our V in and then our V out and load. And then we've got um, down to ground and we've also got, and it's interesting that they actually in the data sheet quote this as a, I think it's one microfarad and tantalum. So that's interesting. And on the other side as well, I'm not sure I'm actually going to use it. I was actually more thinking of a combination which I've used before in this scenario. Uh, and that is, what is that, 10 microfarads? I think that's 10 and I think it's 25 volts, uh, and I'll strap it also to a little 104. Uh, so 100 nanofarads. And if I get one of those on either side, and I've got my guy in the middle, and then the question is just how do I hook it up? So I've had a few thoughts. So I firstly dug out these guys here. Uh, so these are quoted at, I think, a SOT 23 uh, so yeah, not going to be useful in this situation. And you'll note too that the connections are like that as opposed to like that. So yeah, we'll leave, put that one back on the shelf. Then for a while I was thinking maybe I should put it on here and I've done this before as well. And it's, it's good because it gives you a bit of flexibility with what else you connect up. So they line up pretty well with this, um, SOT 8 to DIP 8, uh, connector. And I might still do that. So yeah, that one, um. That's not a bad option for this sort of project. But digging around in the buckets, 
Ta-da, I come up with these guys. So I think that's probably going to be the best option. So that's uh, that's a SOT 223, that's the wrong side. Let's try this one. Yeah, that's better, look at that. Lines up beautifully. So SOT 89 to, to uh, dip adapter. So um, I might do a build montage and put that together and then we'll test it. The build went pretty smoothly, except uh, for some unknown reason. I put some solder on all the pads instead of uh, just one pad like I normally do. Uh, must have been a bit excited, I guess. Uh, and that meant that it was sitting up a bit awkwardly. But uh, the final result was fine. The other weird thing was that I put these together as if ground was the middle pin, which it wasn't. So if you look for the final product, uh, you'll see that it's twisted around. All right, so we have the little fellow strapped in. Uh, they've got the, all the capacitors all set up and then a bridge across here with seven volts coming in on V in and God knows what coming on V out. I've just put a load of a little LED on there. So let's, let's uh, see what the result is. Hopefully nothing burns. 6.96 volts. No smoke emitting. Uh, the LED lights, which is good. Let's go across then and see what the actual voltage is across that load. Wow. Yeah, 3.3 promised, 3.2829 given. That is pretty good. So um, next thing I think I might do is test this to destruction. But um, yeah, pretty happy with that. All right, so uh, a bigger load now. So we've got a 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor across that. And uh, I've set seven volts coming in and I've got a current limit here on the power supply of 0.55 amps. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen, but let's turn it on. And okay, so we've got about 0.32 amps coming through and voltage is holding not too bad at 3.26 and the device itself is yeah warm but not excessively warm so it's coping okay um, I might actually up the voltage and see what effect that has as well yeah pretty impressed all right so uh, I've upped the voltage here this is 12 volts coming in now same current limiting at 0.55 amps but a lower load here with just that uh, red LED back in. So let's give it a try and uh, and see if it'll cope with a higher voltage. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So uh, 3.29, 3.28, um, not registering a current coming through, I'm supposing because that's, uh, that's actually pretty uh, low requirements with that little LED, but um, that's good. All right, uh, now I might try something like maybe seven volts and uh, five ohm, 10 watt resistor, and uh, see if we can break it. Okay, so I've swapped out the 10 ohm for a five ohm resistor. And um, well, before we kill it, just to keep in mind that uh, this is a SOT 89 package and cheap as chips already, I'm pretty impressed, but let's see if we can't, um, uh, well, test the destruction, I guess. Seven volts coming in. I've set this now at an amp uh, in terms of the current limiting, and we'll just see what happens. So here we go. Oh, well, that's that's pretty good. So 0.65 of an amp coming through, holding it pretty well, and the voltage is fluctuating a fair bit, and I think that's failure now. But, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. So um, good little unit, let's uh, solder another one up and then we can use that for uh, an ESP32 or an ESP8266. That's the circuit working for this week, see you next time. A little postscript on this device, which I thought I'd killed, but in fact, I just had a thought that maybe it was the current limiting circuitry on this unit itself, which caused that drop off when it uh, was holding 0.65 amps um, so, so just to confirm that maybe those rumors of an early demise are not true look at that 3.2829 volts back to it again with the lower load 
So what an impressive unit. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing to do is to is to use those in some projects. So I think I've already said that's the circuit working. So um, thanks to Bruce, I'll say uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, we'll see you next week.